Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I want to introduce a new series that I'm working on. Um, it's going to take a few months, maybe longer. Um, but it does have a lot of meaning to me, both as a teacher and a, a instructor and a gun enthusiast. Um, there's been a lot particularly in recent years of debate between the far right and the far left and frankly Democrats and Republicans in general in the US about how to keep our schools safe. The left and this is a generalization I'm going to be as unbiased as possible here, even though I do have my own opinions. I'm going to try and keep my own opinions out of it, and we're going to focus on the empirical data. Okay, we're going to, through this series, we're going to run some tests, have some conversations, and just openly work through logic to try and figure out what really is the best way to keep our schools safe. What concessions can be made? What new policies should be implemented, what those policies might look like, and how they might actually help defend our children. When I look at modern day politics, what I see, and hopefully I would imagine most of you would see if you follow this channel, um, is there is a lot of extremism on both sides of the aisle. And when I say extremism, I mean political extremism. I believe the vast majority of Americans are good people who sit somewhere in the middle of that political spectrum. The problem is, as time goes on, I think this really started around the time of 9/11 is we've be, as Americans we've become more and more divisive as a culture um, someone be, you know being someone my age who has lived prior to the internet as well as since the internet but still was still young enough to experience both times I feel that most of the people I know and most of the people I've had conversations with this sort of thing about feel the same way that I do, which is that currently it follows sort of the old adage that the loud minority is the one who gets their way. I, before the, my previous video to this one, I talked about integrity. And in politics, integrity is completely absent. It's an unfortunate truth. I firmly believe that. So when we start to look at things like how to defend our schools, I'm going to automatically dismiss the musings of the far right and the far left. Okay? Completely banning all firearms? Not going to happen terrible idea. We'll get into why in the next video. Okay, On the other side of the aisle, arming everyone and making it the Wild West, equally bad. Okay, um, What we're dealing with in the media is what's known as the negativity bias which is that in order to get more viewers, humans gravitate towards stories that are negative or outrageous, and, and that's because they are more exciting. The feel-good stories don't get as much viewership, and as a result, the media is forced, in order to maintain viewership, they are forced to cater to that bias, right? that negativity bias. When someone does something good, we don't hear about it. When something good happens, we don't hear about it or we dismiss it 
saying that, ooh, this is just a little puff piece to make people happy. That's how it goes. But when something happens like the Johnny Depp trial, Uvald, those are big headlines. Okay, and that's because of that negativity bias. If you're wondering about that, Google that negativity bias. You'll find some very interesting information there. Make sure you use peer-reviewed articles. Use reliable sources when you read up on things. Now, what we're going to be looking at in this series, I want to primarily dismiss the extremes and find what is that happy medium that may not make everyone perfectly happy, but is bearable for both sides of that political spectrum. And that's what I want to explore through this set of videos. So what we're going to be looking at here, I'm going to be arranging it into about, I'm estimating it should be about a seven part series, including this introduction. Um, we are going to be looking at things like what are the existing policies for school security? What's common? What do you see in the most possible places? Right? What is the general security situation of schools today? This being 2022. The second thing we're going to be looking at, okay, I'm going to look at actual security procedures. What do we do in New York? What do other states do? How do we typically respond to different situations? What options do we have? How are we notified? And how do we follow those procedures? Okay. Then, okay, we're going to look at extra things you can do to defend your classroom. Okay, this is for my teachers out there. What can you, a teacher actually do to protect their students if something does happen? Okay, under existing policies. And what that's going to do, I'm hoping, is highlight just how vulnerable schools are at the moment. You can put as many locks on doors as you want. All they're going to do is prevent someone from getting in the building, but that's still not a guarantee. Most of the time, the doors will be opened for one reason or another, and a person will be allowed inside a building. And by the time they're already in the building, it's already too late. Um, you know, we don't have... It, it, getting into a school isn't an airlock. There may be swipe cards or key fobs or this or that to get into a building. Either way, any violent attacker is going to get into the building before they show that they're a violent attacker. It's just how it works. Okay, It's the same way that someone would rob a bank or mug someone or steal a car or you know harass someone in a parking lot. Steal. It's the same thing. You don't know what's going to happen until it's happening. So we're going to look at how the best way would be to respond to those things. So we're going to look at lockdown procedures. I'm going to look at different ideas and maybe even some products as to what you can use to help in a lockdown or lockout or hold in place situation. Um, things you can use to improve your security. And also things you can do, in my case as a shop teacher, I'm always thinking about safety and security. The items that are in my classroom, once they leave my classroom, they are weapons. And I make that very clear to my students. If you take this outside of this classroom for a non-legitimate purpose without permission, it is a weapon and you will be treated as such. Okay, It is not a fun time for students if they do that. Luckily, they get this and they understand this. I give the kids a lot more credit than a lot of people do. They have more common sense than people think. It's the rest of us that destroy that sense of common sense. It's the rest of us that corrupt that. And that's through our own biases. So being aware of those biases, even if we can't eliminate them, being aware of them is going to make us better as role models, educators, whatever we may be. 
So we're going to look at that. We're going to, I'm going to explore what kind of situations teachers may experience in those lockdown, hold in place, lock out situations. Um, now, one of the other things I'm going to be looking at here, let me make sure I'm not missing anything on my list. Okay, um, the thing that sparked this is all the rhetoric I'm seeing about arming teachers. I'm not going to give my opinion right now in depth. You may see little bits of it pop up here and there because it's unavoidable as a bias. But what I'm going to be, like I said, what I'm going to be looking at is how we can bring good ideas into place and regulate things properly to get the optimal result. So we will explore some what ifs. Okay. One of my goals for this is going to be to create sort of a mock qualification course for teachers who are armed. Um, you know, we will explore what you may run into if that option was to become available. Okay, as it stands right now, teachers are not allowed to be armed. And I think it, with all of the rhetoric that's out there, it would be good to explore what it would mean if that possibility was introduced. So I'm not condoning it. Okay, don't hear me wrong on that. Okay, we're going to explore it. That does not mean that I'm giving it the good job, let's arm everyone. We're going to explore the possibility. We're going to explore what it entails to have that possibility and how it would be best to implement policies under the event that that possibility was really seriously put into effect. So I'm going to look at what do I think teachers should know? How do I think teachers should be able to work with law enforcement in these situations? What can we do to improve security? And what if teachers had more ability to defend themselves, be it with makeshift weapons, be it with just hand-to-hand, -hand, be it with firearms. We're going to look into all of these aspects and we'll see what sort of information and conclusions we can come to by analyzing that. Um, now, before any of this happens, I need to give you all some background on me. Okay, why the heck am I even qualified to talk about this? Well, I've been a teacher. I'm going. I'm in my seventh year teaching. Okay, I've been teaching since 2016. That doesn't sound like a very long time, but I'll tell you right now, you, as a teacher, the number of decisions you make throughout any given moment in a day is about four times that of any other profession, other than maybe law enforcement. Teachers are constantly making decisions. It's how we deal with 30 kids in a classroom around machines and sharp objects and heavy objects and heat and all these sorts of things. So that's the first qualification that I have to talk about this is as a teacher. Okay. The second qualification that I have to talk about this is as a concealed carry holder. Okay. I do have my license in New York State for unrestricted carry. Now, this does exclude things, and as of September 1st, it excludes almost everything. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, that does make me very irritated because I went, I jumped through all the hoops that New York State has to get that license, and then now the license is basically useless. Um, but that is something that makes me qualified. I am a shooter. Um, and then the third thing that I believe helps qualify me is I am a certified pistol instructor. Um, just this past month, I was able to earn my first certification of hopefully many. Um, I did that through the NRA, though I do not endorse the NRA. Um, I have my thoughts on that, but that's politics, and I'm not going to talk about it here. 
I am certified for NR to teach the NRA basic pistol course, and I hope to get more certifications in the next year or two. Um, I do have a passion for learning. That's why I'm a teacher. And being someone who deals in teaching safety every day, I think I'm uniquely qualified to teach that course. Um, so that is another qualification that I have, is I am a certified instructor. So I'm certified to teach about guns. I work in a school. I do have some friends that are in law enforcement. I'm hoping to bring you know one or two of them on uh, if they're willing to, and we will talk to them about their thoughts on how teachers can, you know, in these situations, work with law enforcement. And we will go from there. Um, as far as exploring the idea of firearms in a classroom. One of the goals of this is going to be to create the foundations and some sort of framework for, in those states that do want to arm teachers, how would you qualify teachers to, and have them meet a standard, right? If you want to, in a target, what would be called a target-rich environment, okay, I hate using that terminology, but that's the only thing I can say that would really make sense to people, in a place like a school, there are a lot of people in a confined space. Okay, we learned that through the pandemic. To use a firearm or weapon in that sort of environment, you need to be highly trained. So what I would want to explore is if something did come up in policy that makes it official where teachers can be armed in a school as a you know an aid to defense how should they be trained and qualified in order to have that responsibility and be safe okay um, it's not enough to say oh you have a concealed carry permit yes carry at work right carry at school I don't think that is necessarily the greatest idea we'll explore that and find out so We'll be going through all these things, and at some point, uh, as we work through and mix ideas to create a course for qualification in those scenarios that would be unique to a school, my plan is to develop a course and actually shoot the course on video for you all to see, hey, you know, this might be a good way to qualify teachers who are asked to be armed. Right? What policies should we use to implement that if we were to arm teachers? We're going to explore all of these possibilities. Okay. Now, I'm going to remind everyone once again, this video is not me endorsing either side. Okay. This video is purely about exploration of the possibilities. And that's what our goal is going to be, is to explore the possibilities and learn. And then you will be free to make your own conclusions as to what the solution is. Thanks for tuning in.